From his, let's say, rather complex relationship with his family, to his horrible treatment of wrestling legends. I am Gareth, this is What Culture Wrestling, and these are 10 things WWE wants you to forget about Vince McMahon. Number 10, just how bad it got when he last took total control. WWE is on the rise. The promotion sets record gates virtually everywhere it goes. SmackDown ratings are skyrocketing, and Raw is doing great numbers too. That this has happened with Vince McMahon gone is no coincidence whatsoever. Given that he is slyly creeping around in the shadows currently, he'd probably want you to forget if he were capable of introspection just how poor the product was before he retired in July 2022. Nobody got over really unless their character was guided by Paul Heyman. While he could pull off a quite incredible WrestleMania night one and didn't get a chance to ruin Cody Rhodes, McMahon's product was bone dry at best and impossibly stupid at worst. But really, by the end, WWE was actually more tedious than anything else. WWE would rather you forget the content void over which Vince presided, because the prospect of a return to those days might dampen this boom. Number 9. He is deeply unpleasant to be around. Colliding with old funny stories of Vince being one of the boys, he takes their finishes in bars and scraps with them on planes. What a guy. The current roster of WWE wrestlers are probably wary of a full-time in person Vince return because he is an intimidating and unpleasant individual who rules by fear. Sasha Banks, by her own admission, was reluctant initially to even speak to him, telling Sam Roberts as much in 2016. Per the account of Ricardo Rodriguez, Alberto Del Rio's on-screen personal ring announcer, Vince once stood on Curtis Axel's foot over and over again in a bid to get him to stand up for himself. In a similar story, Mark Henry revealed to Chris Van Vliet that Vince once ribbed him by making him work a dark match with Sin Cara, only for his opponent not to show. When Henry grabbed a mic and demanded someone else come out to face him, and his improvisation went nowhere, he marched backstage to let his feelings be known. Vince had already left, of course. Henry wanted to quit on the spot, but Vince just thought it was funny. And when Henry said he felt useless and expendable, Vince showed him the tape of the dark non-match and asked Henry to replicate that emotion to drive his Hall of Pain push. McMahon Jedi mind trick my ass. This guy was just a jerk. Number 8. He hates you. That might be a bit much, but Vince McMahon does, yeah, actually hate you. He was one that fans wouldn't actually jeer Baron Corbin for retiring Kurt Angle, and that they simply wouldn't buy it. The fans didn't so much hate the idea of the match as believe it was a rib, the idea was so bad. Vince's response per former creative writer Dave Schilling? F em. The fans were right in the end, what do you know? Corbin may have overdelivered against Carmelo Hayes on NXT recently, but fans didn't buy him as a top heel in 2019. Vince couldn't even bring himself to apologize during the infamous McMahon's apologize for the absolute state of Raw segment of December 2018. He was heckled when saying that he could no longer run it by himself, and at the slightest provocation said, I can do it without you guys though. And by the dismal end of his career as a promoter, let's hope it is at the end, he deemed you so stupid and ignorant that there were as many recaps on Raw as matches. Number 7. His complex relationship with Triple H and the rest of his family. Back in September 2021, NXT was revamped, becoming NXT 2.0. The change was not merely drastic, it was transformative. Change is not even the correct word. 2.0 in almost every single way was a complete overhaul unrecognizable from what came before. The last days of Triple H's NXT were a bleak, dark pit of intense, hard-hitting work rate, and while Triple H did flirt with sports entertainment in the Capital Wrestling Center days, clearly it was not enough. 2.0 felt like a punishment, if it cannot be determined for certain that a demotion actually happened. The heavy metal aesthetic was replaced with every single colour, and green throwback powerhouses and Ms. Acolytes sprouted up to beat the work rate workhorses out of the company. Was this all an elaborate way of sneering at Triple H for losing the Wednesday Night War? Triple H did put over Vince as someone who could offer valuable advice even before Vince made his big coup, but he's hardly gonna bury him, is he? For the optics, these corporate types daren't admit that the image of their well-crafted lives could possibly be fake. And wasn't the timing of Stephanie McMahon's second exit from WWE in as many years all very suspicious? Number 6. The Saudi Arabia Plane Incident Something happened on that plane, but for obvious reasons, nobody wants to talk about it. On November 1st, 2019, Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter tweeted, Live by the sword, die by the sword. After which the rumor mill started to whir. WWE talents aside from Vince McMahon, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, and Jimmy Hart, who got out 
out of Saudi Arabia in a hurry, and Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, who departed on the former's private jet, were stranded in Saudi Arabia. WWE cited mechanical issues. The short version of the unofficial slash alleged story is thus. In revenge for not being paid for Crown Jewel 2019 in the expected time frame, Vince McMahon entered a shoot program with the effing Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Because it was WWE in 2019, it went 50-50. Vince pulled the plug on the NBC Action Saudi feed, delaying Crown Jewel by an hour. And in retaliation for that, the plane was held. After which certain mid-card acts were put up in a hotel before the matter was resolved. Even if the chances of a true international incident were remote, and this was a blinking contest between Vince and the Crown Prince. The wrestlers weren't to know that. Carl Anderson even texted his wife, who outright claimed on Twitter that the wrestlers were held hostage, to tell his children that he loves them. Christ. Number 5. His Treatment of Jim Ross Vince McMahon apparently believed that he was expressing affection towards Jim Ross when he mercilessly, cruelly bantered him off the face of the planet. Bear in mind, this, what you're about to hear, is how the bloke thought he was being nice. Vince, variously, let go of Ross in 1994, a fortnight removed from his first attack of Bell's palsy, did an impression of JR's affliction years later in 2012 when returning to WWE Raw on screen in a what's he like, eh, babyface role, relentlessly tore chunks off him through the headset, so much so that in AEW to this day, JR shouts pronoun boy when he slips up to punish himself, mocked his colonoscopy surgery in a bad taste skit, reducing a terrifying ordeal to literal toilet humor that Ross thought his wife Jan had experienced a death in the family she was that upset by it, drafted him to SmackDown live on television, turning his real life upside down just so that he could see his gutted reaction. Ross is adamant that his treatment was never as bad as observers suggest, but he is the only one who defends it. Number 4. He was horrible to Howard Finkel too. Howard Finkel was a treasured on-screen talent. Blessed with a distinctly endearing voice, no announcer has ever rivaled the Fink when anointing a new champion. His prolonged, much imitated, and you announcement was loaded with gravitas. He was also a beloved, long-tenured employee. One of the nicest men to have ever been involved in wrestling, the Fink also coined WrestleMania, which was a significantly better idea than Vince's original The Colossal Tussle pitch. Finkel's reward? Per William Paul Bearer Moody, Fink was institutionally bullied. Moody described the abuse as 24-7, constant. He was too much of a fan and not an alpha male, and so he was force-fed sardines in a bushwhacker's skit and until he was sick, and booked frequently in tuxedo matches because Vince, a phenomenally mean-spirited man, seemed to enjoy watching him suffer. Number 3. He humiliated a ton of wrestlers on screen As already noted, VKM has a somewhat bizarre sense of humor. And by bizarre, I mean rather horrendous. And along with the fact he regularly made the likes of good old JR and the mighty Fink's lives a misery just because he fancied a giggle, you can bet WWE won't be in a rush to remind their current audience of the countless times he completely humiliated larger-than-life superstars on WWE programming either, booking his Mr. McMahon character to force Trish Stratus to bark like a dog, having numerous performers join his dreadful Kiss My Ass Club, screwing hitmen on their way out of the door. The list really does go on when it comes to Vince McMahon-crafted moments WWE wish they could erase from their now family-friendly organization. Hell, as recently as 2020, Vince was still going out of his way to poke the worst kind of fun at his own son-in-law on national television, oddly mocking Triple H for being a boring soul, as he rambled through an awkward attempt at a comical tribute on SmackDown. Just when you thought the pandemic couldn't get any worse, eh? Number 2. He resigned in disgrace This was just a massive lie, wasn't it? And WWE had the temerity to echo the lie on television when, later that night, Stephanie McMahon placed on record her thanks for his service on SmackDown. The great, benevolent Vince realized he was simply too old. At 77, he was 76, the idiot. This this was something WWE had to do. The real reason was all over the media, but they were hardly going to acknowledge that, were they? But imagine if he had actually decided to resign. If Vince had resigned, then Belly had been a show for all the video packages. He'd have sent himself up and out at the same time. There'd have been some sense of occasion. None of this happened, though. WWE thanked him because they felt they had to, but not for too long. They couldn't celebrate nor demonize him, so occupied some weird in-between place. Vince did not retire. He resigned in disgrace after multiple historical sexual misconduct and assault allegations, previously covered up via hush money, were exposed by the Wall Street Journal. Number 1. He paid Rita Chatterton A content warning here, there is going to be some description of sexual assault. The news cycle is horrible. Horrific
horrific, momentous events are reported on and debated. They strike an awful chord with anybody in possession of empathy and a conscience. Then, those people are left to question their conscience when they can no longer summon the proportionate disgust to that story, when several hundred more emerge in the subsequent weeks and months. Vince McMahon finally paying Rita Chatterton should have been a far bigger news story than it was. But by that point, January 2023, observers had unfortunately been callous to the cycle. Chatterton had accused McMahon of hoisting her on top of him before raping her in 1986. Speaking to Now It Can Be Told in April 1992, Chatterton disclosed her side of the story. In her words, he made me have oral sex, and he started to get really excited, and I pulled away, and he got really angry and said that's worth half a million dollars a year. And when I said no, he said I better satisfy him, and he pulled off my pants and pulled me on top of him, and he satisfied himself through intercourse. McMahon insisted this was a shakedown, claiming to have proof that Chatterton was urged to spread a lie by former wrestler David Schultz. He sued both and Geraldo Riviera and Brooks Skulski before later dropping the suit. The Wall Street Journal reported in January 2023 that Chatterton was paid a settlement figure in December in the millions of dollars. She was able to do this as a result of a one-year window opening in New York State, allowing victims to file suits otherwise barred by statute of limitations. In the legal letter written to McMahon, Chatterton's lawyer John Clune revealed that his clients had passed a polygraph test regarding the incident. McMahon's lawyer, Jerry McDevitt, responded to the report by saying, Vince settled the case solely to avoid the cost of litigation. And that is our list. Know of any other things that WWE wants you to forget about Vince McMahon? Well, let us know all about them in the comment section right down below, and don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. Also, if you like this sort of stuff, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I have been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Cheers for watching this video today, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.